Hello guys and welcome back to another video in this series of legal maxims. In this video we are going to look into another maxim called as delegated non-protesters delegate. Now this maxim simply means that when a power is given to any officer or any person such a power cannot be further delegated. Now this particular maxim belongs to the law of administrative law as well as to the law of contract under the topic of contract of agency. Now in this video we are going to look of the application of this maxim in very much detail in both the cases that is the law of agency as well as in the administration law. Now prior to that let's look into few basic points with regards to this maxim. Now this maxim believes that when a power is given to a authority the person is expected to exercise this power. In case he delegates or re-delegates its power, it is not lawful in nature. Therefore, when a delegation of a power from one person to another is done, that power cannot be further re-delegated. He himself has to exercise it. Now, first let's look into the application of this maxim in the law of agency under the law of contract, under the Indian Contract Act. Now under the legal rule that an agent okay, to whom an authority or a decision making power has been delegated by a principal or a higher authority, okay, in such a case he may not delegate to sub-agent unless the original delegator okay, expressly authorizes to do it. Okay. Now to understand this, let's look into the contract of agency. Okay. Now under the contract of agency, there are three partners. Okay. There is first is the principal, there is agent and then there is a third party. Okay. Now the agent, okay, herein acts on behalf of the principal. Okay. Agent enters the agreement with the third party. Okay. So agent works with the principal as well with the third party, making agent the middleman in the law binding legal relation between the principal and the third party okay so agent here on becomes the binding force between the principal and the third party and once the terms and relation between the third party and the principal are over the task for the agent comes to an end principal can be made liable for the act of an agent only when he acts within the scope of authority okay and now next contract of faith agent should do the act by himself agent has to perform his function he cannot re-delegate the powers to someone else now there are certain exceptions to this contract of agency the first situation being the situation in which the power can be re-delegated even the situation even in such a situation the principle can be made liable nature of work now the nature of work is another exception to this particular maxim under under the law of agency okay now the nature of work exception being that the work which is employed to an agent is such that he cannot perform it is such that he cannot perform it without appointing a sub agent furthermore another exception to this particular maxim under the law of contract under the law of agency is trade custom now there are certain trade custom which can be performed by only certain people okay this may be because of the skills or any other such requirement okay now a custom is followed while carrying on the trade that allows an agent to redelegate the good example for this when an architect employs a surveyor okay another exception will be ministerial action an act which does not involve personal or professional skill of a person in such a case the certain act can be re-delegated and lastly the last exception under the law of contract law of agency is the principal consent okay when the principal himself will give a consent to the agent to re-delegate well, in such a case the agent will not be held liable okay when an agent re-delegates to someone who does not belong to the above mentioned category the agent will be much liable except for these exceptions in any other situation the agent will be held liable now next let's look into the application of this maxim under the administrative law 
Now you all will be studying in more detail in the video of delegation of power which I have already done on this channel. This particular maxim applies in the administrative law in a much wider scope since there are so many officers and so many duties to be exercised. Now in such a case when there are too many duties to be exercised in such a manner the administrative in a way allows to delegate powers. Okay but the question is does it allow to re-delegate? Now that is what we are going to see in this video. In administrative administrative law whenever any power is conferred to an authority by a statute that power has to be exercised by that concerned authority or the officer and such a power cannot be redelegated okay now by this we understand that when a statute and a act or when a law okay gives a power to a particular officer that officer cannot redelegate his power to somebody else because that power is given to him by an act okay an example for this matter we can say is when a power is given to a passport officer he cannot give his authority to another authority for example a panchayat or any such institution as the power is given to the passport authority to provide passport or to authorize passport. Now next let's look into few exceptions in relation to this maxim under the administrative law. Now the exception to this maxim under the administrative law can be when the parent legislation himself allows the power to redelegate. Okay, when the statute itself allows the redelegation, who is the authority to question such a statute? So in such a case, the redelegation is allowed. Now that's all for today's video guys. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.